Can you imagine Christians behaving like this? No. That is the power of Christ. Okay, this is, this is what I think. Are you Jewish? Do you want to honor God? That is the godly thing to do. We respect one another. The godly thing to do is to kill you. The godly thing is to kill me. That's right. That's yes? what the Torah says. The Torah says to kill us. The Torah says that I don't, uh, people who worship idols such as yourself, when there is a Sanhedrin, to kill us. Yes. Okay. That's what the Torah so says. So we know how the Jewish people feel about Christians, yes? That you Christians discriminate are, against Christians. Christians are idol worshippers. You discriminate against The Torah says that Christianity is idol worship. Yeah. Certain runaway slaves have escaped from us into your kingdom. Slaves go back, as you no doubt, but return our slaves to us. There are, however, some free men among them. Rebels. Rebels. If there's disturbance in Arabia, why am I not informed? They are rebels in religion. At one time or another, all religions are rebellions. The bodies of slaves are of the world and within our disposal. But as Jesus Christ is our shepherd, the souls of men are his sheep. These are Arabs who have betrayed the religion of their fathers. They follow a lunatic thing, call a prophet. But I cannot put souls into chains without hearing them. Good. Their stiff necks will hang them. Do you not bow yourselves before your prophet? Muhammad is a man. We kneel only to God. Where are Muhammad's miracles, Jafar? If he were a prophet, he'd light the sky with miracles. Indeed, this is true. God has given his prophets the sign of miracles that he may recognize them. The miracle of Muhammad is the Holy Quran. A book! A book! Written by an illiterate, attributed to God. I think the emperor has had enough. I'm mindful of Pentecost, when God set down tons of fire from the heads of Christ's apostles, so they could speak the many languages of the world that they knew not before. But do such miracles happen in our times? I've heard enough. You've made a poor case. When we suffered persecution in Mecca, Muhammad told us, go to Abyssinia, the land of a righteous king, where no man is wronged. What they call persecution was fair punishment. That is order. Now, why did your prophet send you to me? Because you believe in the book of the one God as we do. He sent us because in your heart God will protect us. Talking with them is like drawing water from a mirage. But they've now had a duty on me to listen to them, my friend. Go on. For years, we worshipped wood and stone. According to Bible.com, Deuteronomy chapter 4 verses 28 to 31 King James Version. And there ye shall serve gods, the work of men's hands, wood and stone, which neither see, nor hear, nor eat, nor smell. Images of our own manufacture. We lived in ignorance of God. We had few earthly laws and no heavenly laws. The rich neglect the poor, and the natural pity of man, whereby he lifts his brother up when he has fallen, is described by them as upsetting social order. To this inhumanity has come a man whom God chose. And in that we believe. You are overcome. I beg you to collect yourself. I speak of the messenger of God. Muhammad teaches us to worship one God, to speak truth, to love our neighbors as ourselves, to give charity. Even a smile can be charity. To protect women from misuse, to shelter orphans, and to turn away from gods of wood and stone. I cannot keep still and hear this blasphemy. We are an ancient civilization. To call our gods wood and stone is to speak ignorantly of them. The idol, the form, is not what we worship, but the spirit that resides within the form. I agree that idolatry is not always fully understood. Thank you. Now let me bring him back to the women. God made woman to be the proper companion of man. She is different, but equal. Equal! We buy them, feed them, clothe them, use them, discard them. Women equal to us? <laughs> <laughs> God created man from one male and one female. Ah, oh, you must respect in all women the womb that bore you. Why are your 300 gods so tongue-tied? Why his only god is elephant? God has spoken to us before, through Abraham, Noah, Moses, and through Jesus Christ. Why should we be so surprised that God speaks to us now through Muhammad? Who taught you those names? They are named in the Quran. I knew Muhammad when he was an orphan minding sheep. And we knew Christ as a carpenter. But Christ says, what your Muhammad says is like two rays from the same lamp. They are lying to you. They deny Christ. You worship three gods, they say. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, they say. What do you say of Christ? They say God cannot have a son. Christ is not the Son of God. Speak to me of Christ. We say of Christ what our prophet has taught us. That God cast his Holy Spirit into the womb of a virgin named Mary. And that she conceived Christ, the Apostle of God. The Apostle, he says, not the Son, not the Son. What does your miracle, your Quran, say of the birth of our dear Lord Jesus Christ? 
May I relate the words? Come closer to me. In the name of God, most gracious, most merciful. Relate in the book the story of Mary. How she withdrew from her family to a place in the east. How we sent to her our angel, Gabriel, who said, I am a messenger from your God to announce the birth of a holy son to you. She said, how shall I, Mary, have a son when no man has touched me? And Gabriel replied, for your Lord says, it will happen. We appoint him as a sign unto man and a mercy from us. It is a thing ordained. between us and you is no bigger than this life. Not for a mountain of gold will I give them up to you. You may live in Abyssinia in peace for as long as you wish. May God's blessings be upon you on your return. You shall certainly find the Jews and those who associate partners with Allah, the most vehement of the people in enmity against those who believe. And you shall certainly find those who say, we are Christians, the nearest in friendship towards those who believe. That is so because there are savants and monks amongst them, and because they are not haughty. You know, versus I saw instances where like they were misquoting, you know, verses from the Quran. Who was misquoting verses? Mainstream media. Really? One was like, kill the infidel, strike their necks wherever you find them. Yes, that does say that in the book. But they're not talking about Christians. Christians were not considered infidels in Islam. Who were they talking about? They were talking about the other pagan Arabs that were trying to destroy the Prophet Muhammad, who was bringing monotheism. So in that verse, they were at a battle, if I'm not mistaken, it was called Badr. It was the Battle of Badr. And God says in the Quran, He commands the angels, go and support the forces because they're outnumbered. And I commanded the angels to strike the infidels. He wasn't even commanding the Muslims. And they used that verse in the mainstream media to make you think as an American that the Muslims are coming to kill you. Mm -hmm. But I'll give you a quote that it does say, Speak kindly to the Christian, for they are the closest to you in faith. Amongst them you will find men of reason and education. That's in the Holy Quran. When's the last time you saw that on the news?